to WSJU Radio with your host, Intro Dog Kev, the number one college radio station in New York City. Today we have a very special guest dropping his like FNOK outside in both ways. We got Maury Briscoe in the building. What's good? What's good, y'all? How, how's it going? How's life? How's it going? Shit, everything regular. I'm chilling. Casual. Right. How was life growing up in Crown Heights? Regular. It was regular? Yeah. All uh, right. So I've seen that you go back and forth like um, from New York and Miami. Yeah, that's a fact. Which state you believe is better and why? I say Florida because you feel me? It's I'm out the mix, just getting money, where you to focus on music. When I'm in the towns, I feel get distracted a lot. Mm. So, like, what rappers growing up inspired you to start rapping? I say the number one rapper, 50 Cent. Why 50 Cent? <laughs> like, if anybody know me, you know that, that that was my favorite rapper since young. I don't know why. Like, he just grew into me from a baby. Mm. And then, <laughs> is that any more or just only 50? That's really it. That's really it. Yeah. All right. Then I know I seen I heard a story about you were inspired to rap too by like your bro Ricky Jensen. How did you meet Ricky Jensen? What's um, your relationship with him? From from high school, like when I first came into high school, I was a I was a freshman. He was like a um a junior, I want to say a junior or sophomore. But for me, he just was like a older brother figure to me type shit. For me, he came and took me under the wing when I was in school and shit, showed me around, for me shit like yeah. that. And then when you start first started rapping, it was like through a PlayStation mic. I heard. Yeah. I was, <laughs> so when you first started, when you first started, then you learned how to rap and flow. Did you also learn how to engineer too? Nah, I still want to learn how to do that though, so I could eventually get my own setup in my crib and shit. Is it important for rappers to learn how to engineer then? I wouldn't say it's really important, but it is a main thing that a lot of us should learn to do because it's more going to be more helpful instead of spending bread going to the studio back and forth. Because as much as I like to be in the studio, I like. I wouldn't be spending as much bread, you feel me? Because I, I want to go to the studio almost every day. Every night, I feel like I got a new track done and I got to record. What's the best studio in New York City you go to? Zod Nation. Shout out Zod Nation for a fact. All right. And then I seen that your first song, 50 Bars, mm-hmm. to now, you know, one of your most recent <laughs> songs. Like, How did you feel you grew as an artist? I grew a whole lot. And I'm, gr- <laughs> I'm mad at all my mans that didn't tell me that I was dirt back then. Because well, I feel like that would have pushed me to do a whole lot better and get better faster. But I took my time and I got to where I am now, so I'm grateful. And then, you know, you began with, like, the beginning of the Brooklyn drill scene. Like, who do you feel started the Brooklyn drill scene? I give it to my Blicky niggas all the time. All the time. We started that. And they know that. We carried it. We paved the way. That was it. All right. And then you've seen everyone been talking about the Mount Rushmore, the drill music. Who do you, th- who do you think is the top four for the Mount Rushmore? Not even going to lie. I can't say too much about, like, other niggas, like an uh, older nigga group, but I'll say for the younger nigga group, it had to be myself, Freshy the General, M.I.S. Ron, Will Blake, and what is it? need one more, right? No, it's four, right? I think it's four. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. All right. And then I've seen, and also that's also on what NYC sounds like, and 68% believe you're a top three GD rapper. In your honest opinion, where do you rank yourself? One, two, or three? I say one. I say it all the time. <laughs> Why do you think it's more? I say one? it confidently because a lot of niggas can't fuck with me. I do what niggas can't do, so that's why a lot of people appeal to me more. Mm. And then, you know, a lot of people think it's about your lyrics and how you spit, like, crazy punchlines, metaphors. Mm-hmm. What do you believe is the best verse you ever put out then? Damn, I don't even know. <laughs> um, A lot of people would say outside, mm-hmm. but right now I'll say F and OK Part 2. F and OK Part 2, all right. And then you start with what? the... What? Nah. Response? Three? I don't know. Why not no? Why not response know. three? I don't know. Like, I know myself, and I feel like that was really average. That's why, I, like, when it shot the way it did, I was surprised, because I know that wasn't really, for me, as hard as I could have went. But it is what it is. Then do you think GD rappers will ever be on the top for music? As of right now? Never. Nah. Nah. You know, we blackballed. There's a lot of niggas in the industry that's blackballing us. I don't want to fuck with us, because it would... They claim we bring with us. They say we bring too much, what they say, baggage. Aggression. <laughs> That's what it really is. They, they they know what's going on, though. Right. And then, then can you respect, like, 22 said, like, not wanting to beef with the ops anymore? Or you think he should have never done that in the first place? I don't think he said exactly that, but where like, he was coming from, I understand. You understand? Especially for a businessman. You feel me? You got to move like a businessman now with you in the industry. It ain't all about the street shit we grew up on. You feel me? Do you think it's smart for, like, drill rappers to leave the drill scene then? I wouldn't say it's smart or dumb to leave it a stay, but if that's what you really into and that's you, you feel me, you got to abuse that. That's why I keep trying to explain to people why I do so much drill music. Even though I could do melodic shit, I'd rather do the drill 
because I know that's what people like to hear from me, and I know that's what I'm best at doing, you feel me? So. Right, because, you know, you, so, all right, so you do the drill scene, but you're in your heart, then melodic is your sound. That's a fact. That's, that's a fact. And then that, with melodic music, there's a lot of stories. You speak a lot of stories in, stories in your songs yeah. of past experience. What do you believe was the hardest lesson you learned then? Hardest lesson I learned was trusting a female. <laughs> I'm going to show that to all my young niggas. You heard, do not trust no female out here. They is not for you. They will go do the spiteful things you think they're not going to do. It'll be that one that'll do it. You'll be like, wow, you really did that? <laughs> right or wrong? <laughs> um, so Factor. then what song was like the hardest story to write about? Like It was like, damn. I-, I say the hardest to write about was Love Don't Live Here Part 1. And I say that only because like at the time I was like, I ain't gonna front. I was tight. Like, I was upset, bro. Like, I was angry at the world, you feel me? I ain't wanna fuck with nobody. But when I got in the stool, I just, bar for bar, just punching in, saying what I felt. That's why the song came out so good, because I know that shit came straight from the heart. Right, and then that was, like, into, like, your album, the Heartbreak Hit Volume 1. Yeah. And then you just teased the Me Versus Me album. How would Heartbreak 1 be different? How would uh, Me Versus Me be different than Heartbreak Volume 1? Um, I wouldn't say it's different. It might be similar because I got a little drill on there, got a little melodic on there. So y'all gonna get every side of me. That's why I said it's me versus me. Y'all getting both worlds. Is it how long? How many songs are gonna be there? Is there any features that you can confirm? Or? Yeah, definitely. I got ten songs on there right now, and I got a couple features. Mm-hmm. You are gonna hear Job Flock. You are gonna hear Will Blick. You are gonna hear Cushman Flocking. You are gonna hear Milo Flox. Get out. Get out. And right. yeah, and you're doing features with Job Flock, Mis Ron, Wild Blick. Who else would you want to? To collab with um ain't really too much niggas i want to work with because like right now i'm on like just focus on me mode you feel me but yeah. it's a lot of niggas that i do want to work with me and i'll be willing to work with them you feel me just reach out or right, if they reach out how much you charging then or you don't even charge you just and if you fuck with a song you fuck <laughs> with a song i ain't gonna lie right now i'm charging a band for a verse and if you want a verse and a hook it's 1500 with the vid 1700 all right and then I seen that I li- when you watch your interviews, right? You speak a lot about basketball. Yeah. So what made you want to transition from basketball to rap? I just got too focused into the rap shit. Well, let me not even say that. I got pulled in with all the attention I was drawing, bro, to myself. It's mad females coming up to me in school, mad niggas coming up to me in school, and I like as I'm watching myself progress, I see it's a lot of niggas I start to look up to me. So I was just like, for me, basketball ain't really it. All right. What position did you play? In? It depends, because when I was playing for an outside of school team, I was a power for it. But when I was in school, I was like, I wouldn't say the shortest, but I w- my whole team was tall, you feel me? So I was in a point guard, shooting guard, back and forth. And yeah, St. John's University, it was like the number one basketball school, you know. Yeah. I know if you know who Shamori Pons is, yeah, he played it. Where, so, and then speaking about college, you spoke about trying to get a college degree also. Yeah. And why is it? why do you think it's important for, like, um, artists to get their college degrees and stuff because music can't always be the fallback like if the same music don't work out what I'm gonna do I got nothing else to fall back on I can't go like that then you know all the college students that listen to this like what advice do you want to give to college students, college students who listen to your music y'all stay focused do what y'all do you feel me get through it it's important y'all need it alright and then for new listeners listening to this for the first time what three songs you recommend they should listen to off rip or if rip, you gotta listen to Loot It Up, you gotta listen to Outside, and you gotta listen to F and OK. What you said? Let's get it. Let's get it? I mean, well, that's new now for me, but y'all could tune into that too. Let's get it. I mean, because you've been flocking. Right. And then, what do you think is like the most interesting thing about you that no one ever got to ask you or get the chance to talk about? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right, and then what made you realize then you could turn this rap into something bigger than what was like the first paycheck, the first milli, the first hundred k, first hundred k, first hundred k, first hundred k. I was like, nah, they really fucking with me. They fucking with me, so I'm gonna take this shit somewhere. I gotta do something. Or, and then once you make it mainstream and you know break through the barriers, how are you gonna put everyone on? I'm gonna start putting niggas like putting money into niggas and investing in all my mans that I know got the potential to do it. You feel me? So. I don't want niggas to be looking for a handout, but I'm going to be a helping hand to niggas. You feel me? I'm going to put you in the studio. I'm going to get you a cameraman, get your videos done. You're going to get it done because I ain't getting no handouts myself. So how you expecting one? You feel me? So if you're going to invest in them, all right. So that means would you start your own label? Yeah, you could say that. Let's take that. All right. 
And then you're independent right now. Yeah. So w- what will make you sign to a label? The bag right or a creative? To be honest, it's how the bag looking. I know my worth. So if they're trying to downplay me, I'm going to have to, you know, go the other way. All right, all right. So, do you, wait, do you like to write your music? Do you like to um, freestyle? I'm not going to lie. Before, I used to, like, spend time in my crib writing music, practicing it a thousand times before I go to the stool. But, like, lately, I've been going in the stool just punching in bar for bar, oh. freestyling and shit. What do you think is better? So, right now, you think it's better for punching in right now? Yeah, that's right. a fact. So, when you did write, how did you deal with writer's block then? Just get high <laughs> come back to it. <laughs> Get high and come back to it. And then, you know, you spoke earlier about being blackballed and all that. How do you deal with doubt with the music? What keeps you going focused? Because I just block everybody out in the first place. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'll put out a music video that I know, you feel me, might not get as much views as my other videos. But it's just like, I throw it out there just to see the feedback that comes back from it. So it's like, I really never care about anybody's opinion, or what they're going to say, who's tuning in, who's not. It's like, it is what it is. It's out there. What do you think was the best experience so far as a rapper? Mm. <laughs> He's laughing. You ain't. <laughs> you know her. <laughs> females. That's all I'm going to say. It's females. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, speaking about experiences, how does it feel like now you go down Crown Heights and all that? Before, you was just walking with your friend. No one really knew who you were. Now you go down. Yeah, that, you know, I'll give you a perfect example of how that changed. When one day, it was the summer, last summer, I'll say, I'm riding a bike, walking um, with my man's going down one of the blocks of my hood. There's a kid coming down. And as he's coming past me, I hear him whisper my name. Like, he said, that's Maury? I'm like, but like being so, like, anxious and paranoid, all my man's just turned around like, what? What he said? So I'm like, nah, 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 chill. Let me hear what he's saying. The nigga came back. He turned around and walks up to me. He's like, you Maury? I said, yeah. He was like, nah, I'm a big fan, bro. Can I take a picture with you? Took the picture with him and shit, and I saw I realized I'm like, nah, this shit real. Like, these other niggas really fuck with me. All right, and then what type of advice do you want to give to your fans? Then the, the little kids, the kids that listen to your music. What, what Don't advice? follow me. Don't follow what I do. Just listen to the music. The music is entertainment. Uh, all right. So, what can we expect from Maury Briscoe in the future? Like, I know the tape is coming out, the album. Like, how just co- expect a lot of big features like Probably. this year. If I'm not on it by myself, y'all gonna see a big name on it. That's it. That's all. How I'm big only the name is benefic- I'm only working beneficially from now on. Right. So that means big features. That means like Coach and oh, 22 and people like that. People you like, say. All right. And then my last question. I always ask this question before we get into the freestyle. What type of legacy do you want to have with the name Maury Briscoe? When people bring up Maury Briscoe, what should they associate with it? I want them to label me as like one of the greatest. Like. And when you're in a conversation and you try to name who the best MC, you will hear Nas, you will hear Jay-Z. I want to hear my name in there one day. All right. All right. So thank you for tuning in. Where can people can find you at? Y'all can follow me on Instagram at the Real Maury Blick. Y'all could find me on YouTube, official Maury Briscoe. Yeah. All right. All right. And then we'll, we'll be right back. All right.